Hello, today we are doing some stamped concrete, some vertical uh, stamped concrete on the fireplace, doing a rock pattern. Uh, we're actually using the True Pack Axe from Wild Tools and um, 80 pound, 80 pound bag of mortar mix combined. And uh, there's a couple things that when I was researching, um, I found out and one of them was uh, to use the tile mortar as a scratch coat. That's what we did. I heard a lot of people say it was okay and uh, fine to use, but however, it's it's really not because the tile mortar is water resistant and the mortar's not, and the water in the mortar will try to repel off the scratch coat. So do not do that. Use the regular mortar mix as your scratch coat and it would hear a lot better. And another thing is, it was, uh, I believe it says it's four, uh, pliable up to four inches thick, uh, which was also extremely difficult. Uh, anything over two and a half inches uh, did not really want to stay. Uh, you could build it out to four inches, but one, one, one layer four inches uh, is pretty difficult so if you keep it under the under three inches it should be fine uh, you can see on the side there we've already done the back and the sides of the fireplace at this point uh, we've done the staining also which there's a, a little video in here about the staining But you basically just throw it on there. Um, you want it the right consistency. You want to be able to make a ball with it, uh, but you don't want it too dry. It needs to uh, be wet enough to stick. Uh, the bolts there are for a mantle that we are going to be hanging there. So we're just going around those, we tape them up. Make sure you build your corners out good. And the, uh, the stamps we actually are using, I uh, really can't remember the, the name or pattern of them, but they are the wall tools from wall tools. Or it's actually pronounced Walt tools, I believe. But. Anyway, you just start on there and smooth it out with the trap. Um, you want to keep the surface a little bit wet and spray every now and then so the, the surface, the face of it ain't drying out quicker than the rest. Uh, we just made this arch here with a string and a pencil. And we're actually going to have to carve this part. Um, it's going to be like a bigger, bigger stones here. Just, just getting the rough, the rough shape of them. Uh, you can buy all these fancy grout tools and carving tools for uh, for a very uh, expensive price, but what I found out was the plastic drywall knives uh, work just as good, if not better, in my opinion. And they're about three dollars for a pack of different sizes, so don't go and buy these fancy grout tools because they're really not needed. <clears throat> so basically you would just stamp your pattern in and uh, the stamps will do a pretty good job but you're going to have to go back over it with your detailing tool. In my case the plastic drywall putty knife because the lines 
inch stone, you know, they're not gonna, that stamp won't go very deep. And the deeper you can tuck that line in, that grout joint, uh, the, the more realistic it's gonna look and the more uh, depth it will give you to your stones. So after you stamp, and you can wait a little while. I mean, you don't have to do it immediately. You can wait, you know, up to probably up to an hour. Let it set up a little bit. And then take your plastic knife or whatever you're using uh, to clean out your lines and everything. And go through the entire thing and tuck all the grout joints where the, the rocks tuck them all in good because. It's your only chance is why it's wet. You know, once it sets up, you really can't do nothing else with it. So make sure you got plenty of time to work on it, and just take your time and go through. And uh, and the detailing is the key to this, to it looking realistic. Because you know, just after the stamp. Um, it does not look very realistic, but in the carving and the staining is going to bring it. It's going to bring it all together real nice. So yeah, right after we stamped it, I was kind of disappointed. Thinking, well, this does not look like stone. But the more and more you mess with it, the more realistic it starts to come. I didn't have any kind of. Um, or for these big stones, so I'm just using things that I have to to rough them up a little bit, uh, to give them some character to look like uh, I guess a stone. Or you don't want it perfectly smooth; that's just going to look fake. And you don't want them. You want one, you know, setting out further than the other. One setting in a little bit. Okay, this right here is what I'm talking about by the detailing. Go around each individual stone separately. You don't want the lines uh, like perfectly straight from one stone to the next. You just go in and tuck that, tuck that line in deeper, carve it out some if you need to. Corners, um, just make sure that you take the stone in the front all the way around and get that grout line the same. Or that, that join in the stones, just keep it the same and carry it all the way around to the corner. That'll look like it's one thick rock sitting there on the corner. And that's what gives it the, the color tone. You can see you've got like darker or darker tones in the in the deep places. This is it after it's all stained. And scuffed. And I have a video coming up right here about staining and, and scuffing it. As you can see, it's all concrete gray at this point. Not very realistic looking. So what you do is, um, well, depending on the stain you use, I use water-based stain from Walt Tools also, uh, which work really good. It's very easy to use, uh, but you want to make sure you spray the wall like this with water before you go staining, because that stain is going to drip down, and if the wall's not wet, it's going to stain drip stains on the rocks below. 
and it's going to look like stain was put on there and it dripped down. So by waiting the while first, when the stain drips down, that water will dissipate that stain and it'll just leave like a, maybe a little darker place in the stone. Just got, I got three colors, black, a reddish, and a cappuccino color. You just go through and, and stain random rocks. Like I'll go through and use black. I'll do all the ones black that I'm going to stain. Just get the entire stone, you know, as deep as you can see with the stain. You don't want to look down in there and see just the very face of it stained. And then you see the gray, you know, as you look into it. You, want, you need to make it that same color as deeply as you can see. So it looks like the entire stone is, is black coming out. I mixed uh, my stain one to one ratio, uh, or one part water and one part the water-based stain. Because you don't want uh, your colors to be extreme. I mean, you just want a subtle tone, a subtle different color like you don't want a, a black an actual black black rock and an actual red rock you just want it to be red or black tinted and that gives you the subtle changes in the colors and in my opinion looks uh, much more real I'm just going through using the black on random stones and just make sure you carry that color all the way around the corner. And I'm, I'm not in this actual video right here because I haven't sprayed this side down with water yet. So I don't want to put my stain on there yet. Now I've switched over to the red stain. I'm calling it red. It's technically not red. I, I can't think of the name of it, but... It's a reddish tint. And if you look at any natural uh, stone veneer like this, it's, you'll see a lot of red uh, tint and black. It's the reason I chose the colors. And you'll leave some stones just a concrete gray. And that'll give you four different colors, basically. 